So we repair everything from brakes and shocks to the toughest engine problem. So when you put it all together, nobody beats Amco. Come to Ebert's Amco on Wade Hampton Boulevard in Taylor's. We're open and here to help. With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Get an incredible summer offer on a new Honda, only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Ready, set, go. Welcome to ESPN College Football. It is presented by Sling TV. You're watching the American Conference on ESPN. We got a battle of the Carolinas as the South Carolina Gamecocks take on the ECU Pirates. Hello, everyone. I'm Brian Custer. So proud to be a part of the ESPN College football family and happy this man right here, Kelly Stauffer. He's my partner all season long and partner. Listen, we got two programs trying to get back to prominence here. First time South Carolina have made a trip here to Greenville since 1997, coming in with a hot quarterback who three weeks ago was on staff as a coach. <laughs> really good to have you with me, Thank by the you, way, bro. my friend. And Zeb Nolan, one of the most intriguing stories to start this early college football season. And remember, he took off his pads about three months ago thinking it was all over with. He walked through the door to coaching, and lo and behold, he threw a couple of balls to recruits, and the offensive coordinator, Marcus Satterfield, said, hold on a second. you have any eligibility left? Luke Doty goes down is a question mark today as far as we know it and Zeb Nolan ran with it last week but now you're on the road you have to manage some adversity we'll see how the Zebuli does today 20th meeting between these two programs ECU won the toss they've elected to receive and they're going to start things off at their own 25 so we'll get our first look here at Holton Ehlers three year starter here at ECU and Listen, the whole offense revolves around Holton Ehlers. Yeah, no question, because and they got to get Holton off to a really good start. He's really a rhythm-type passer. He has the experience. He has the skill set. Straight line speed in the run game, but get off to a quick start offensively and keep this crowd in it that should be a factor today. And here the, the handoff, and they're going to go with the pass, and he's got a man open down the sideline. Desai Hatfield takes it to the house on the first play. But we've got some laundry on the field as well. There's a flag. I think that's going to be a late hit, actually, roughing the passer, who was a receiver that threw the football. I think it's a late hit with targeting that will be reviewed. But the shenanigans start early in this one. 75 yards, the Pirates on the first play. As Sneed got it, and how about the throw there by Tyler Sneed? And there's the hit. Inag Bari is the one that is going to get called for the targeting. It's under review, but if they lose J.J. Inag Bari, their best player defensively, Huge. that's enormous to start this game. And I think it's absolutely... The forcible contact above the shoulders to the head and neck. That's what it was called. I think this will be confirmed. And I think Enik Bari is going to be done before he even got started today. Yeah, I mean, listen, as you talked about best player, their most talented pass rusher. He was first team all SEC last season. We take another look at this. And actually, I think there's a window of hope if you're South Carolina because the it shoulder. looked like potentially it was the, the shoulder. shoulder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's go forcible the contact the mm -hmm. above the head and neck on a defenseless player, which a, a passer is exactly that, whether he's a receiver or not. Where is the forcible contact? Is there enough of it on Sneed above the shoulders in the head and neck by Ignek Bari, and if so, the best player for South Carolina defensively is going to watch you. 
Touchdown, East Carolina. So there you go. They say he led. He said he led with the shoulder, and that's the important part. Yeah, and I think because the forcible contact wasn't primarily above the shoulders to the head and neck, so that's a ginormous break for South Carolina defensively. Even though it took East Carolina one play to score in this one. Here's the extra point. Owen Daffer. Good. And just like that, the Pirates strike first, seven to nothing, thanks to Josiah Hatfield with his career long 75 yard touchdown catch and run. And Tyler Sneed is the back, the receiver in motion from his slot. And the target is Hatfield, the deep guy that. The coaches talk to us, they need that guy to get going. They need a vertical threat. So you really design something right out of the gate and it worked to perfection. That aggressive defense, the mentality from South Carolina defensively and Sneed knows that they got off to a quick start. His second career touchdown pass and the Pirates on the first play, strike first. And how about that pass by Sneed, by the way? He dropped that in the shirt pocket, just like a good quarterback would, but that was epic. Wait, listen, ECU talked to us about they've got to get the football to Tyler Sneed today. And in fact, their offensive coordinator said, and he knows I love boxing, he said he is pound for pound the best college come football on. player in the country. Come on now. <laughs> That's I, don't, what he said. I don't know about that, but I'll tell you what, pound for pound, that was a terrific throw. And we talked about the importance of the SEC going on the road, ECU using this home crowd to an advantage. You have to get started quickly, and East Carolina has done exactly that today. Daffers will kick things off. Juju McDowell to carry on Joyner back deep for the Gamecocks. This is Joyner inside the five. Gets it across the 20. So here comes Zeb Nolan. I guess we got to call him a super, super senior. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how you classify those guys that have <laughs> been around forever, and especially guys that have been a graduate assistant for the last three months. He took off his pads at North Dakota State back in the spring and thought it was all over with. He calls this an opportunity of a lifetime, and I would agree with that. So Quandre White in the backfield alongside Nolan. He rolls right and throws it to the outside to Joyner. Joyner knocked out of bounds at the 30. So because the first question that ECU has to answer defensively is can they hold up against this SEC massive offensive line of scrimmage, and we'll see how that plays out. Here's White. A couple. So the game coach will be looking at third down. And yeah, that offensive line didn't get a very good push that time, but if you're from the SEC going on the road to a group of five school, you get behind those massive guys up front again and try to eke out a third and probably inside of one right here and extend this drive. Two tight ends for the Gamecocks. White right up the gut. Did he get enough? I'm Xavier so sure Smith was the first person to meet him. And if he got the first down, that's all he got was just a yard. Yeah, and if you're Shane Beamer going on the road, he talked to Lauren before the game about going on the road you have to face some adversity and his team didn't face a lot of adversity in week one playing at home and so the game of football is about how you deal with that adversity and Zeb Nolan and company on the road we'll see if they extend this drive right here I was really surprised that Kevin Harris wasn't the running back in a third and short He's your pounder. He led the SEC 
in rushing a year ago behind a big offensive line, and he wasn't the guy that called, carried the ball in third in about three quarters of a yard. Well, Zaquandre White ran for 129 last weekend for South Carolina on 12 carries. You know, the team and the players voted him the offensive player of the game. But we expect to see Kevin Harris here very soon. White remains in the backfield alongside Nolan. High snap. And White runs into a pirate wall. The offensive line for South Carolina is a is a big veteran gnarly group. And they didn't really play all that well last week. They didn't have to necessarily, but there were multiple times in the run game where they just didn't hat people up consistently. So we'll see if they can get that done today. Game catch will go with three wide. Nolan, the pass. And too high. He was looking at Jalen Brooks. Overshot him. And Brooks was just running a curl route outside. There was a little bit of pressure on Nolan, and this was high and wide. And that's what you're going to see out of East Carolina. It's a blitzing team, and they come from all over the place, and you never know when. But if East Carolina can live in second and third in a pass down, they feel very good about themselves today. Coach Beaver said we got to be great on third down. They were 7-14 to 14 on third down last week. Here's Nolan rolling right. Throws. He's got a man. It's Josh Van. And Van in pirate territory. Brought down at the 40. 26 Trem yards pass and catch. Tremendous throw. You're going to avoid some of that pressure by getting Nolan outside, and then you have to get over top of that defender underneath who almost gets a hand on that ball. And the coverage was Nolan Johnson outside. Very well done. And once again, what you're going to see out of Zeb Nolan is a reliance on his vast experience. Remember, he played at Iowa State, kind of got supplanted by Brock Purdy, a pretty good quarterback, and then went to North Dakota State, got supplanted by Trey Lance, also a very good quarterback, played in the spring in the FCS season. So he suited up not that long ago, but he walked through that door to be a coach, and all of a sudden he's back again slinging it. Kevin White has checked in for the Gamecocks. The SEC leading rusher last season. You got trips at the bottom of your screen. Nolan thrown and picked off. Warren Saba with the pick. He was thrown to Jaheim Bell. Jaheim Bell was going down the seam, hadn't even turned his head. And this was a run pass option. And Nolan has to read that. You are reading one guy, the overhang defender to the left side, and then you're ripping a seam down the middle. And it was just a really good read by Saba from his safety position. And that's how you defend the run pass option, especially the vertical part of that. It's a seam down the middle, and that safety just has to be flat-footed. Don't go on the run until you know and Saba doesn't look back. I mean, Saba looks at the ball and the receiver doesn't look back. But that's all about Zeb Nolan throwing into traffic. Tenth straight game that ECU has forced a turnover. Here's Keaton Mitchell. Over that left side, and he may have lost the yard. The first big mistake at that quarterback position, we talked about Zeb Nolan's experience. And the receiver not looking back because is, is somewhat misleading because it's a run pass option. And the receiver can see that safety setting there and doesn't believe the ball's coming to him. So he doesn't look back for that reason. The ball probably should have been handed off to Harris. Here's Ehlers. He's a lefty. And that's complete to the outside to Mitchell. He's a lefty that can get hot if he's on time and in rhythm. The coaching staff compared him to like a Steph Curry that just fills it up when he fills it early in the game. Mike Houston said that our quarterback has to fill it early in the game. And right now they're throwing 
stuff where Ehlers can get the ball out quickly. Houston in his third season here at ECU took James Madison to the FCS National Championship there. Third and six for the Pirates. Ehlers looking right, throws too high. Overshot C.J. Johnson. Going to the right guy, just threw a bad ball. Ehlers sometimes will force stuff because he thinks he has to make too much happen. He went to the right guy, the check down, kind of his second receiver, and just airmailed C.J. Johnson. If you throw that accurately where the receiver doesn't have to leave the ground, he probably squares up and pick up, picks up that first down. John Young will punt things away for the Pirates. Josh Van standing back at his own 20. <laughs> Time out, South Carolina. They're first. This will be a 30 second timeout. Time well, Brian, we talked about. Uh, Beamer ball 2.0. Mm -hmm. A couple of really nice special teams plays last week by South Carolina. And Shane Beamer has been in the middle of that his entire career. So you would expect South Carolina's special teams to typically make a difference. Here are a couple of plays from last week. First, it was the swinging gate, two point conversion, the direct snap to the tight end, and then the block punt, just blowing up the shield in front. Big plays on special teams. Runs in the family if you're a Beamer, and we'll see if South Carolina takes on that characteristic of their head coach. They had two blocks, and they certainly went after this one. No flags. And a good pirate roll. Down at the 12. What a start for the Pirates. Sneed to Hatfield. And it's the Pirates up 7-0 on the Gamecocks. When something's wrong with your car, it's tough to know which parts to blame. So take your car to someone who's trained to fix and replace virtually all of them. You may just know us for transmissions. But at Amco, we repair everything from brakes and shocks to the toughest engine problem. So when you put it all together, nobody beats Amco. Come to Ebert's Amco on Wade Hampton Boulevard in Taylor's. We're open and here to help. With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Get an incredible summer offer on a new Honda, only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Ready, set, go. Seven to nothing, our score. We played nearly five minutes here in the first quarter. We get another look at Zeb Nolan and the Gamecocks. And for more on Zeb Nolan, let's go to the third member of our broadcast crew. Here's Lauren Sisler. Hey, guys. Great to be with you. Brian, great to be with you on this team. We talk about Zeb Nolan, one of the more unique quarterback stories in the country right now. Shane Beamer said that he reached out to some of his trusted friends, including Lincoln Riley, and said to him, am I crazy for getting this guy out there? Am I crazy for doing this? And the resounding answer was, no, this is awesome. Shane met with the leaders of the team. He even showed them tape of Zeb slinging it around in 2018 when he was at Iowa State. This isn't some guy off the street. This kid, Zeb, can play. He sure can. He hands it off there to Kevin Harris. And you know, so many of it, whether it is Ehlers or Nolan, so tied to both coaches. Because even Coach Houston, it had nothing but great things to say about Zeb Nolan. He's known him and his family for years. Yeah, there's definitely some uh, intertwining in multiple layers. But what is Lincoln Riley going to say? <laughs> Your quarterback situation, <laughs> you just have to have the next Heisman Trophy winner. That's the answer, right? right. I mean, what are we doing? That's a wrong guy to ask right there. Kevin Harris, Juju McDowell in the backfield. And he flip flips. This is Josh Van. Gets around the edge and 
Josh Van picks up about six. And a little change up to the run game. ECU defensively is selling out to stop that SEC run up front. And so you use that aggressiveness against them and give the ball on the reverse to Van and move the sticks. First down for the Gamecocks. They'll swing it out to Brown. Brown cuts back. And he's going to lose a couple. D'Angelo McKinney makes the stop for the Pirates. South Carolina offensively is just trying to get speed in space a little bit to loosen up the East Carolina defense. McKinney does a nice job from his defensive tackle position. When the ball goes deep to the perimeter, defensive linemen have to essentially run down the rail, and if that play comes back to him, you'll be in the right place, and McKinney did just that. Play fake, too high over the middle, and nearly intercepted again. Jawan Powell breaks it up. Let's go to the studio and Kevin Connors. Because this studio update brought to you by Rocket Mortgage. Acho, Michigan stayed up early. How about Peyton Thorne to Jaden Reed? Yes, this is the flea flicker, and everybody in the world has to believe it's run, except for the safety, number 26, Jordan White. That's your play to make. But we got a shout-out. Phenomenal throw. 75-yard touchdown. 7 nothing. Sporty on top. Right. All right, Kevin. Thank you, bud. Gamecock so far, two for two on third down. Nolan under pressure. Set! Jeremy Lewis comes flying in and makes the defensive stop. And the Gamecocks will have to punt. Wadham has a tough task up top right there. You can see just speed off the edge. And the tackle steps down inside. He thought the linebacker was going to come and you would take the most dangerous. The linebacker backs out. And then the tackle on him is just laid outside. Kai Kroger with the punt. And once again, it'll be Pirate football. They're up seven here in the first quarter. When something's wrong with your car, it's tough to know which parts to blame. So take your car to someone who's trained to fix and replace virtually all of them. You may just know us for transmissions, but at Amco, we repair everything from brakes and shocks to the toughest engine problem. So when you put it all together, nobody beats Amco. Come to Ebert's Amco on Wade Hampton Boulevard in Taylor's. We're open and here to help. With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Get an incredible summer offer on a new Honda, only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Ready, set, go. ESPN College Football is presented by Sling TV. Replace cable with affordable live TV with Sling. And in part by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Visit Progressive.com. You know, we are here in the first quarter, 7 to nothing. Our score, East Carolina over the Gamecocks. You know, we're highlighting some of the college football fun that we missed last year. So let's check out the Twisted D drop in as we look at the East Carolina Pirate Walk. This is 930 this morning. And look, we missed this. We no fans. But look, the team had it, greeted, people out tailgating. And it's a, always a rowdy, dowdy Ficklin Stadium here in Greenville. And here goes Rajay Harris across midfield. And he was the all-AAC rookie of the year last season as he picks up 15. 
And Harris is more of the power guy, but he also has really good feet. As you see the zone read, and the ball goes up inside to Harris. Quickness inside, and then you bring Keaton Mitchell as the speed guy that can get to the edge. Here's Harris again. And he's driven backwards. Jabari Ellis was the first to meet him. Well, the game plan for ECU today offensively was to try to get a little bit out of that run game early and then protect well and try to test this South Carolina secondary deep early. It's a lot of new names on the back end. We'll see if ECU can get to that part of the game. Ehlers looking over the middle. And again, he was looking at Josiah Hatfield. That's Cam Smith, Ehlers, and that's, that's the best cover corner for the Gamecocks on that back end. Yeah, I wouldn't try to make a living picking on Cam Smith. Cam Smith had a foot injury, was out during the spring, and was limited in camp. He's somewhat on a pitch count because his conditioning is still in question to some extent, but he is their shutdown guy on the back end for South Carolina. Harris offset left of Ehlers. Third and ten. Pressure. Sack. Aaron Sterling. South Carolina will blitz according to the percentages, and at third and ten, high percentage blitz down, and South Carolina gets after it. That's where Ehlers has to understand. You don't want to lose ground right here. Know where your exit hatch is and throw that football away. It was a pressure look from the beginning, and it was breaking down from the beginning as well. you got to get rid of that football. Clayton White, the defensive coordinator for the Gamecocks, sending the pressure, 11-yard loss. John Young in to punt things away. Van standing back at his own 10. Just under six minutes left here in the first quarter. It's the Pirates of seven over South Carolina. When something's wrong with your car, it's tough to know which parts to blame. So take your car to someone who's trained to fix and replace virtually all of them. You may just know us for transmissions, but at Amco, we repair everything from brakes and shocks to the toughest engine problem. So when you put it all together, nobody beats Amco. Come to Ebert's Amco on Wade Hampton Boulevard in Taylor's. We're open and here to help. With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Get an incredible summer offer on a new Honda, only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Ready, set, go. Army had four passing touchdowns last season. This is their third already this year. Christian Anderson to Brahim Murphy. Yeah, well, the safeties are eight yards deep. This is Army there running. Pass? Touchdown? What? They played the run action, played the play action, and it was a touchdown. 14-7, the Black Knights of the Hudson on top, Ryan. All right. Kevin, thank you. 7 to nothing. our score here in the first quarter. South Carolina. And Zeb Nolan. Marshawn Lloyd in the backfield. He's got the rock now. Bounces off a of one pirate. And turns nothing into a two-yard pickup. South Carolina is just probing in that run game, trying to establish something. Zeb Nolan is not seeing things clearly to begin with. The two forced passes on tight ends down the seam just hasn't been working all that well. So you try to get the run game going, but it's the two forced passes. It's the interception on the seam. This is making a decision before you have the football. You have to confirm all of that intel after the play, and no one's not doing it very well. And that was to the outside to Jalen Brooks, but that was low, incomplete. 
And he doesn't seem like he's in a rhythm yet. No, and a completely different sense watching him today as opposed to a week ago. A week ago, he was in control. He told us all the right things, which is he just has to take what the defense gives him, not force it. And the two throws to the tight end were absolutely the opposite of that thought. Third and eight for the Gamecocks. Here comes pressure. Nolan gets rid of it and throws it away. Rick DeBru, one of those applying the pressure. And because you talked about it, this is called a zero blitz. It's man to man across the board. There's no help deep. The quarterback, Nolan, does the right thing by throwing that football away. But right now, East Carolina defensively is not respecting the receiving core from South Carolina whatsoever. Kai Kroger will punt things away. I mean, if East Carolina today can go zero blitz, man to man across the board, no help deep, and feel comfortable playing in your face man to man against this receiving core for South Carolina, they can pressure the run game as we've already seen it. And then the pass game against that man to man is getting zero separation. Intention of grounding. Office number eight. The penalty places the ball at the spot of the foul and includes the loss of down, fourth down. Man, I don't agree with this call whatsoever. Nolan was in the pocket. You can throw the football away if there's an eligible receiver in the area. And there's a receiver running down the sideline, and certainly the intention is to throw that ball away, but who's to say the receiver didn't go the wrong direction? I mean, that's absolutely the wrong call right there. Here's Snead from his own 45. Across midfield and in, brought down, and there's a flag. Nick Muse brought him down, but way inside that pirate sideline. Here's Alex Moore. First with foul, targeting, number nine of the kicking team. So the personal foul part, we definitely could see from the late hit out of bounds, but it's with targeting right there. First of all, I don't think that constitutes forcible contact. The extracurricular clear over in the bench is certainly needing a yellow hanky, but it's the left shoulder above the shoulders in the head and neck. But the question is whether it's forcible contact and was there an indicator? I'm not sure any of that stuff is there. I don't see really the indicator, and I don't see that as forcible contact. I would expect this flag to be picked up except for the late hit personal right. foul part of it yeah I mean targeting you've got to use the crown of your of your helmet and he certainly didn't do that it was the shoulder so I, I would think maybe a late hit out of bounds don't you think well then you don't have to use the crown of the helmet if it's a defenseless player which this is not so you're right the only targeting would be the crown of the helmet and that crown of the helmet could be any, but anywhere. It doesn't have to be helmet to helmet. That's old school talk. But if you use the crown of the helmet, you lead with that. That is the indicator, and it could After certainly be targeted. There is no foul for targeting. Number nine can remain in the game. And I think that's exactly the way to do it. Yeah. You know, you, you call it, you err on the side of safety. The replay booth takes it, and they overturn it if they need to. I think that's well officiated right there. And Nick Muse is, listen, he's he's one of their big targets offensively, the tight end. So you need him in the game if you're South Carolina. So here comes the Pirates again. Now, keep in mind, the Pirates, first play of the game, 75-yard touchdown. Since then, last seven, just a total of seven yards. Here's Ayler rolling, hit, throws. And that one's complete. Josiah Hatfield. 
That's really good stuff. The lefty Ehlers is getting outside to the left. You talked about the pressure was coming at him. And he gets hit about the time he delivers that football and Hatfield makes another really good play. From the pistol. This is Mitchell. The freshman straight ahead. And he's got great track speed. And you can see that burst. The difference between Mitchell and Harris. Mitchell a little more power. The really good feet in the box. And then... Mitchell could just flat out fly. Second and five. It's Mitchell again. Aaron Sterling makes the stop as they run behind that right guard, Sean Bailey. Sean Bailey's a big dude. 6'6, 335. He's a road grader from that right guard position. Maybe not the most athletic offensive lineman you've ever seen, but he can move people. And considering this is the 20 year anniversary of 9-11, Sean was born in New York City. His father was a first responder. New York City firefighter, one of the first to respond. Try to pull survivors from those towers and the rubbish. He always says playing on this day just brings back so many memories. And, you know, his father is here today. Big Steve is here. He's in attendance. And his, fa his father, let me tell you something, the pillar of strength, this man there, you see him, the FDNY's hat on, diagnosed with cancer twice. Wow. This is from 44 yards out. Owen Daffer. No good. So we remain at seven to nothing as we take another look. Daffer just looks like he pushed this from the beginning. Didn't quite get through it. Pushed out to the right side from the get go. I think it had the length, but Beamer's all about special teams. And that's a cornerstone of his program is really good special teams. And defensively, you always start with a touchdown on the board and you hope to hold them to a field goal and then a, a longer field goal attempt and then ultimately a missed field goal or turn the ball over. And so a win defensively for South Carolina right there. Daffer made his collegiate debut just last week. His career long was 39 yards. So Quandre White is back in the game for the Gamecocks. Nolan looking. Plenty of time over the middle. And that one is caught. Jaheim Bell makes the catch. Yeah, two Gamecocks fighting for that one. The spacing was not ideal, but Jaheim Bell goes up as that big body tight end that can go high point things. And he's the one that comes down with it. You saw that seam route for the third time to that tight end. This was the time that Zeb Nola needed to go there. The ball's a little underthrown, but Bell goes up and claims that football in the air. 48-yard pitch and catch for South Carolina. Nolan again over the middle. That's complete. Josh Fan loses the football. And is the ruling a touchback or what? They're going to discuss it. Did he lose the football before he broke the plane? And keep in mind, it's the very front of the white line in the end zone. If the ball is possessed, when Van penetrates the very front of that line, it's a touchdown. Yeah. The road on the field is a fumble from the field of play into and out of the end zone for a touchdown. That's because where it becomes a little bit dicey is when the replay booth potentially has to overturn it. So is there possession when Van is getting 
right to the line, and I think that ball is out. Yeah, that ball I think is the out. officials got it exactly right. How about Nolan Johnson? Yeah. Yeah. Nolan Johnson, the sophomore corner with the swipe. Van did a good job of hanging on with the first contact by Powell, but it was Johnson coming from the backside and swiping directly at the football, and I think it was loose right before Van penetrated the front of that line. That's a great job of officiating to get that right in real time. We're looking at it at high-def cameras and all those things in slow motion, but I think the officials got it exactly right the first time. The thing that we can't see, we, we know the ball's dislodged, but we can't see right down the end zone light on that look. And what they can do in the replay booth, because is they can, it's called a quad box. They can sync all of those angles up together and know exactly when that ball is loose. If you look at that angle right there, it looks like that ball was coming out before he broke the plane. Well, ECU is doing most everything right currently and South Carolina just isn't doing the same thing. They're not taking advantage of plays just like that. So many times in the game of football, it's not the guy you see that dislodges the ball. It's the other guy. And that's exactly what happened here. Well, Alex Moore with the call. After review, the way on the field stands. Touchback, first down, a team, East Carolina. Another turnover for the Gamecocks. So they've had an interception, and now the fumble. And that fumble took seven off the board directly. I mean, those are the ones that hurt extremely hard. And ECU, once again, they're doing the little things right in this first half to maintain this home field advantage. So here's Ehlers. Makes a check. Harris breaks a tackle. Picks up about a good eight. That's where you see the experience of Baylor. You know, that, that initial motion is literally to gain intel from the defense. He saw something that he didn't like by sending the motion man further outside. He brought him back inside to seal that edge and then run it right up the middle. Harris again, spins, and that's a first down. Hey, today at 4.30 Eastern on ABC, college football presented by Arby's features number 10 Iowa, number 9 Iowa State in Ames. Then we'll take you to the big house, Ann Arbor. Saturday night football matchup presented by Capital One. Jim Harbaugh, the Wolverines host Washington. You can always watch all the games on the ESPN app. One app. One tap. Here's Harris again. Jabari Ellis, the first to meet him. East Carolina is not doing anything fancy up front. They're the ones that are getting a little bit out of the run game. And it's really just inside zone, which amounts to just getting a hat on a hat. This offensive line for East Carolina was not happy the way they played a week ago. Much better on their landmarks here today against South Carolina. So the final seconds of the first quarter. And it's the Pirates up seven to nothing on South Carolina. Pirates, big play of the first play of the game 75 yards they've also gotten two turnovers and they're up seven nothing on the game cops when something's wrong with your car it's tough to know which parts to blame so take your car to someone who's trained to fix and replace virtually all of them. 
You may just know us for transmissions, but at Amco, we repair everything from brakes and shocks to the toughest engine problem. So when you put it all together, nobody beats Amco. Come to Ebert's Amco on Wade Hampton Boulevard in Taylor's. We're open and here to help. With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Get an incredible summer offer on a new Honda, only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Ready, set, go. AT&T 5G studio update. Kennesaw State driving on Georgia Tech. Acho till Jordan Dominic does everything. Yes, I need everyone to appreciate this play. The fumble, the stiff arm, the spin cycle, and then, oh, we're going to score, we're going to score. I'm excited. No, get out of my way. Go block that guy. I'm in the end zone. Total domination by Jordan Dominic. It's 14 0 Ramblin' Wreck. Brian. <laughs> All right, KC. Heck of a run. 7 0 as we begin the second quarter. The Pirates, they set it up for Kevon Mitchell. Keaton Mitchell, you know, listen, they did ran this play last week, and he took it basically 79 yards to the house. A really good changeup to their normal offense is when they can get number five the football in any way possible whether he split out wide taking the direct snap it's a really nice extension to what they normally do offensively Taylor calling out the protection at the line steps up in the pocket he's going to take off and it flips it There's a flag. He, was he over the line of scrimmage? I think he was. I think he was over the line of scrimmage by what, three, three yards. To four <laughs> yards. And this is a loss of down, too. So this is uh, certainly a big deal right here. I mean, didn't he have basically the first down if he, he just did. keeps the football? Loss of awareness right there. Five yards from the spot of the foul. Lost it down, fourth down. Hmm. Costly for the Pirates. You just look at the line of scrimmage right here, and you're going to see that Ehlers is I'm guessing about three yards, maybe more. Boom, right there's the line of scrimmage. He's pressing <laughs> in on five. Our man forgot where he was on the field, and he had the first down, and we could have extended this drive. See if South Carolina can take advantage of that type of mistake. He certainly went after it. Man, fair catch. To the studio, let's get an update. Here's Kevin Connors. Yeah, because big game, Oregon, Ohio State. How about a 99-yard drive capped off by C.J. Verdell? Yes, there was no edge on that play by Ohio State. That's why you see him walk into the end zone. No Kayvon Thibodeau when the Ducks are in front, Brian. Mm. Brian, you're an Ohio State guy, right? Yeah, man. Columbus, Ooh. born and raised. Yeah. You and brother Darren here. Yeah. Are you guys doing all right? We're Seven all, to nothing? I don't know. They're getting Thibodeau's updates. not playing? I know. I know. Hey, take a look here. At this week's college football rankings brought to you by all state Buckeyes ranked third. And well, CJ Stroud, he's, he started off slow last week yeah. and picked it up in the second half. You still have hope. I still got a fit. That's to carry on Joyner. And I th certainly want to see how CJ Stroud responds in his second start of his career. And that's a that's a showcase show game yeah, for absolutely. the Pac 12. Yep. They have to do something on a national stage, and, you know, so far, so good. Listen, that, that game, and then you've got, obviously, Washington and Michigan, too. Yeah. Statement Saturday. Marshawn Lloyd, Juju McDowell in the backfield. Yeah, that's Marshawn Lloyd with it. And he's met at the line of scrimmage by D'Angelo McKinney, and he tried to rip the football away from him as well. D'Angelo McKinney is just a menace up front, leading to a third and pass down once again. And 
East Carolina told us this, that they felt like if they could keep him in a pass down, that they could get consistent pressure. If they had to live in second and third down with only two or three yards to go, they thought it would be a long afternoon. Right. He said, they said third and long is the key for them. South Carolina, two of four here, 50% on third down. Over the middle. That's caught. The carry on Joyner, did he lose the football? DJ Ford comes up with it. And another turnover for the Gamecocks. ECU's defense is built on tackles for loss and takeaways. And so, first of all, you would say, well, what defense is it? The rear on the field, the defender. The previous play is on the field of the I think his knee down. I think this is coming back. I think that's going to be a first down joiner. I think joiner was down on the ground. Anything except a foot and a hand constitutes the ball carrier receiver come ball carrier being down. Jeremy Lewis is the one ripping it out. Does joiner have possession before that ball comes out? And I think he's down. What's your call? Because let's hear it. That's, that's a tough. Oh, come on now. That's Don't tough. stay on the fence yeah, on me. Leo, no, I know. I'm taking another look here. <laughs> we got a great angle. Here's the rip. And his, uh, his hip is down. Yeah, he may be down. I think he's down. He may be down. Looks Although, like remember, hit. it's so important how it's called on the field. You have to see indisputable video right. evidence without a doubt in order to overturn what was called. See that knee. That right knee to me yep. was down before that ball came loose. I'm with you. I think th they will overturn this one. I think you're exactly right. Since the right. call was fumble. Possession, possession, possession. I think he has possession before that. You know, from somewhere, the, the ang ankle to the knee on the right side, I think, is down before that ball comes out. Knee, and now ball's coming out. And again, they can piece this together in the replay booth with multiple angles. And I think they're going to conclude that that's a first down South Carolina. They maintain possession. And I think this is a really important, important. time in yeah. this game. Here's Alex. After you, the on the field stands. Wow. First round, how about Real. that? Woo. How about that? It's all about how it's called on the field and what they see. And that, 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 the key is what you talked about, the conclusive evidence, yeah. I think. No, no doubt. It. And none of those angles that we saw really was the beyond a doubt. And in the end, another big play by East Carolina. See if they can take advantage of it offensively. And they start in the red zone. First time for them in the red zone. And it's Mitchell. Inside the five. East Carolina's just hatting them up up front. That was the one question that Donnie Kirkpatrick talked to us about, the offensive coordinator. The first question we have to answer is, can we hold up against this SEC defensive front? And the answer so far has been they've done pretty well. Pirates come with two tight ends. And they're going to call a timeout. Timeout, East Carolina, go first. Seven to nothing, our score here in the second quarter. When something's wrong with your car, it's tough to know which parts to blame. So take your car to someone who's trained to fix and replace virtually all of them. You may just know us for transmissions, but at Amco, we repair everything from brakes and shocks to the toughest engine problem. So when you put it all together, nobody beats Amco. Come to Ebert's Amco on Wade Hampton Boulevard in Taylor's. We're open and here to help. With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure 
leads to another. Get an incredible summer offer on a new Honda, only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Ready, set, go. Hey, make sure you kick off your week one NFL Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern. Countdown crew on ESPN and the app. You got Patrick Mahomes. He sits down with former Chiefs teammate Alex Smith. He's now part of our countdown team. Plus, inside look at what could be Aaron Rodgers' last dance in Green Bay. And all early breaking news, injury updates, previews of each game is all right up to the kickoff. First and goal for the Pirates. Ehlers keeps it. Touchdown. First rushing touchdown of the season for Holton Ehlers. And Ehlers doesn't actually run it a ton. But when he does, it's it's really timely. He's reading the end man on the line of scrimmage, steps down inside, and the quarterback does an easy job and just steps outside and into the end zone. Really good decision-making by a veteran trigger puller. Extra point is good. Another turnover for South Carolina, and it turns into seven for the Pirates, thanks to Holton Ehlers. And it's ECU up 14 on the Gamecocks. When something's wrong with your car, it's tough to know which parts to blame. So take your car to someone who's trained to fix and replace virtually all of them. You may just know us for transmissions, but at Amco, we repair everything from brakes and shocks to the toughest engine problem. So when you put it all together, nobody beats Amco. Come to Ebert's Amco on Wade Hampton Boulevard in Taylor's. We're open and here to help. With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Get an incredible summer offer on a new Honda, only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Ready, set, go. Welcome back to Greenville, North Carolina, and it's the Pirates up 14 to nothing over South Carolina. You know, we've talked about how today is the 20th anniversary of 9-11, and certainly we need to pay tribute to some of those first responders for their heroic efforts uh, trying to save people from the towers and the rubbish. And one of those is Big Steve Bailey. He's the father of Sean Bailey, the starting right guard of the ECU Pirates. You know, this week, Steve came out here. Sean tweeted, put pictures up on his social media of his father. He says it's always emotional for him when 9-11 uh, occurs. And they look, Big Steve is here. Uh, and they just really did a very special recognition of him inside the stadium. Uh, that was just great. Touchback for the Gamecocks, and as I just mentioned it just moments ago, there's Sean, and they recognized his father, Steve, and watch, look at that. Incredible. And, and I love that the, the entire crowd just yeah. challenged Big Steve. Let's get more on this story. Let's go down to the field in Lawrence Sisler. Hey, guys, I had the honor of talking to Steve on the phone yesterday. He recalls that day like an 18-hour nightmare that comes back every single year. Let's and go! While today is no easier, he takes great solace in being here to watch his son live out his dream, playing in his final season of collegiate football at ECU, being here, seeing the fans come together, cheering and celebrating is a reminder of unity and of strength that he has tried to build on in perhaps his darkest days. Zed Nolan 
Over the middle, that's incomplete. He was looking at Jalen Brooks. And again, another look at the Baileys. Steve and Sean, and listen, Sean was three years old wow. when this happened. And Sean told us that the motivation for him to kind of reboot his career and get okay. after it was all that his dad went through as he began to hear that story as he grew up and being able to get out on the field and allow his dad to kind of live vicariously through his son is yeah. pretty special. Absolutely. That's to the outside. Marion Brown brought down, back down to the field in Lauren. Yeah, guys, and what's neat about the Bailey family story is when they decided to move to Georgia from New York City, Sean and Steve really got to see how football is treated in the South, much different than what they experienced up north. Football was king, and the Southern football culture really became a catalyst for Sean's aspirations to play football at the next level. And so he's living out his dream here, and really this is an opportunity for him to be on this big stage. And we'll see what the future holds for him, but for now his dad and he are taking it all in. Third and four for the Gamecocks from their own 30. Nolan loses it. And this offense is just out of sync. I think that's a great description. And Nolan simply takes his eyes off the ball. It wasn't a great snap, but that's your first job as a quarterback is to secure the football. I think Nolan was thinking about other things. His eyes were elsewhere. The ball's off to the right a little bit. It wasn't a great snap, but it certainly was a snap that Zeb Nolan would handle. Zeb Nolan simply is not seeing the field as cleanly and as clearly as he did last week. A completely different defensive scheme out of East Carolina. This is a team, South Carolina, put up 46 in their season opener, even pitched a shutout defensively. Right now, they're down 14 here in the second quarter. When something's wrong with your car, it's tough to know which parts to blame. So take your car to someone who's trained to fix and replace virtually all of them. You may just know us for transmissions, but at Amco, we repair everything from brakes and shocks to the toughest engine problem. So when you put it all together, nobody beats Amco. Come to Ebert's Amco on Wade Hampton Boulevard in Taylor's. We're open and here to help. With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Get an incredible summer offer on a new hunt, only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Ready, set, go. And Connor Samacho in studio, C.J. Stroud to Garrett Wilson gets Ohio State on the board. Yes, the entire defense was looking towards the sideline, trying to find out what the play was. Ball snap, C.J. Stroud, Garrett Wilson, touchdown. Meantime, Jaden Reed has two catches, Acho, 75 and 85 yeah. yard touchdown. Yes, and the safety, bad eyes. You got to look at the offensive lineman. And men line of scrimmage will tell you everything. You've got to be in the middle of the field. 28 nothing, sporty, Brian. Okay, thank you guys. 14 to nothing as Nolan and Luke Doty look on. Roger Harris. Jay Robert pushes him back. Because you and I were just talking about this, that, you know, does Shane Beamer potentially make a change? Zed Nolan's not seeing things correctly. I know that. I've been there. I've done that. I. There's a, a time when it just doesn't click. And Luke Doty can bring you a little bit of spark in that run game with his own feet. Taylor to the sideline. And we've got a flag. And another flag. Cam Smith. South Carolina, I think, jumped. And so that's why Ehlers was going deep because nothing to lose. And then Cam Smith defends it really well and then has a boneheaded play when the play's dead and is going to get called for an unsportsmanlike, I believe. 
I mean, South Carolina just can't get out of their own way currently. You see the battle of the nine, Tyler Savage and Cam. There are two fouls, both against the defense. Offside, defense number 99. It's a five yard penalty. After the play, our sports like Honda, number nine of the defense, taunting his first. This 15 yard penalty will also be enforced after enforcement. First down is Carolina. I mean, because that play is just kind of indicative of what we've seen out of South Carolina today. And you listen, and these players know that that's a point of emphasis this season is taunting. Yeah. By the officials. I mean, Cam Smith couldn't have played the ball better on Tyler Savage and then just gives a gift to East Carolina afterwards by losing his cool. Cam is taking out of the game. So is dialed in South Carolina. Well, this game has really been about two offenses that haven't done a ton. Right. But East Carolina has been able to run it just a little bit, enough to open up that play-action pass game, the RPO game, and then Holton Ehlers has seen it more clearly than Zeb Nolan on the other side without any semblance of a rushing attack whatsoever. Harris. And again for the Pirates, the first play for them goes 75 yards touchdown. But since then, you know, 19 plays, and it's been a total of 69 yards. And yeah, their defense has taken the ball away three times. The interception when Nolan forced it down the middle of the field. Two fumbles after the receiver caught the football. And East Carolina is up by two touchdowns. So three turnovers, but only seven points off those turnovers. That's the good news, and that's probably what Shane Beamer leads with in the locker room when he gets there at halftime is, hey, dude, we couldn't have played worse, and we're okay right now. Let's go get it done in the second half. Third and five. Aylen under tremendous pressure, and he's going to throw it away. J.J. Nagbari. And the question is whether Ehlers was out of the pocket. He's got to be outside, it wasn't the, right? Outside yeah, got to be outside the pocket. I don't think he was. And this ball came out. Intentional grounding flag should drop to the ground right here. There was not an eligible receiver. And there's the flag now. Intentional grounding offense number 12. The penalty plays the ball at the spot of the foul. And includes lost it down. So the tackle box is essentially where the tight ends are lined up or where they would line up. And then an imaginary line drawn all the way back to the goal line behind the quarterback. And if you don't get outside of that, and there is not an eligible receiver in the area, it's got to be intentional grounding. East Carolina is now over five. This has not been a, exactly a, a great offensive display today so far. No, no, no. Fan calls for the fair catch. Eight minutes until the half. Can South Carolina get something going offensively? We'll find out. When something's wrong with your car, it's tough to know which parts to blame. So take your car to someone who's trained to fix and replace virtually all of them. You may just know us for transmissions, but at Amco, we repair everything from brakes and shocks to the toughest engine problem. So when you put it all together, nobody beats Amco. Come to Ebert's Amco on Wade Hampton Boulevard in Taylor's. We're open and here to help. With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Get an incredible summer offer on a new Honda, only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Ready, set, go. 14 to nothing. Our score here in the second quarter. You know, extra yard for Teachers Week is really an annual effort led by the College Football Playoff Foundation that brings college sports together to support and honor great teachers across the country at games, 
and on social media to learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers. Follow at CFP Extra Yard. And we got a new quarterback, the carry on joiner. Let's come in at quarterback. Now, he was a quarterback in high school. Been playing wide receiver, but he can fling it. Yeah, and he actually came to South Carolina, was a quarterback initially. And two years ago, he moved to the wide receiver position. And this is typically a changeup, running kind of the power zone read. But we've been told by Marcus Satterfield that Joyner could sling it as well. So we'll see if they may allow him to run with this a little bit more based on the fact that Zeb Nolan just is not playing very well thus far in this first half. Third time South Carolina has had to start inside their own 20. DJ Ford makes the stop. And B. Cuss, in, until Joyner throws a football, the defense just simply is going to sell out against that look. He, he typically keeps the ball. He doesn't give the ball up much, and he hasn't thrown it yet. And two plays with number five in, and we're still in the same place that Nolan was in all first half, and that's third, a pass down. You see the Gamecocks two for six on third down, looking at third and eight here. From their own 14. Nolan back in. Scanning to the outside. And that's complete to Nick Muse, the tight end. And the Pirates were looking for their fourth turnover because someone jumped that route, didn't it? Yeah, McMillan thought that he had a pick six. Nolan does a good job of coming to the secondary receiver. That's a poor play by McMillan. It's third and eight. All you have to do right there is, is tackle the big tight end. Don't worry about the football, and that wasn't a, a great break on it anyway. But nonetheless, South Carolina has to punt once again. Kroger again with the punt. Third time the Gamecocks have gone three and out. You know, last time that the Pirates have forced three turnovers in, in the first half, 2011. They forced Ooh. four of them in the first half against South Carolina. To the studio, Kevin Connors. Because check this out. Kenny Pickett to Jared Wayne to Lucas Kroll to the checkerboard for Pitt, Acho. Those are a lot of names, but it's one trick play. Our corner, you got to be in the deep third, but the trick play got him sucked up. Look at Pitt on the road up 17-13. Decoration. Pirates use some on the first play. In this they game. might use some right here. Let's see. Keaton Mitchell in the backfield. Taylor looking right under pressure. And another sack for the Gamecocks. Pickett's from his defensive tackle position is the one that's going to create the pressure quickly. And then the defensive end from the top side closes. If the quarterback doesn't have anywhere to step up, those ends will eventually squeeze in on him. And that's what we expected out of South Carolina's defense today. Yeah, Jonathan Strong, you know, he's the transfer from Georgia State. He led the nation in sacks last season with 10 and a half. That's Ehlers. And he's close to a first down. second and long after the sack and that was a designed run the quarterback draw you motion outside you look out there you give the idea to the defense that you're going to go wide on something but it was really a maintenance play on a design quarterback draw trying to get in third and makeable but third and makeable is not third and ten right watch the defensive pressure right here back at the original line of scrimmage so here's Ehlers looking at third and ten Steps up, throws, and picked off. And the Gamecocks come up with their first turnover. We get a little push it and shove it on that sideline. And the flag comes out. C.J. Johnson was the intended receiver. Darius Rush. 
came up with that interception, the corner that jumped it in there for Cam Smith. Remember, Cam Smith got in trouble earlier in this half and might still be in the doghouse, but Rush does a nice job of recognizing down and distance, and then the receiver's breaking point tells Rush when he can break. C.J. Johnson is going to try to run around to pick up the first down. Once you know he's not going deep, Rush jumped him. After the play, first and foul, and let's say what this defense. It's the 15 yard penalty and forced from the intercepting spot. First down. And the important thing is it was after the play. Mm -hmm. So the change of possession took place on that really good recognition of the route and break on the football by Darius Rush. And I know Coach Beaver is going to say this. Not only the turnovers are going to bother him, but he said even in their win, the penalties. Exactly. And Beamer gets in here initially fired up. And then his guys just get out of hand when they're still East Carolina players in that squad. So here's Nolan. Up the middle, Kevin Harris. Pickup of eight. Thought we would hear more from him. He didn't play last week, led the SEC in rushing a year ago, and is the physical pounder in the tackle box. Harris again, bounces off a pirate, but driven back. Jaquan McMillan makes the play. And here's the thing for South Carolina. Listen, there's four minutes left. If you can score. Oh, no doubt. We we got a football game. As ugly as it's been, if you can go down and get in the end zone right here, then Shane Beamer can go into halftime coaching his guys for the first time when his team has suffered a ton of adversity in the football game. And keep in mind, South Carolina would get the football to to begin the second half. Third and eight. Here comes pressure. Nolan steps up, sack. Xavier Smith, Bruce Bivens. And you name it, that East Carolina defensively is just trying to create one-on-ones, believing that their guys are going to go by the tackles. You can see up top, 75. Turnatine is matched up on Xavier Smith, just creating one-on-one. So many pressure looks isn't creating guys that just run free. It's creating one-on-ones. The East Carolina feels confident that they can win. Four, three, and out. Let's go to the studio and get a game update. Well, Brian, coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, we'll check in on the heavyweight showdown in Columbus between Oregon and Ohio State, how the Ducks are fearing without Kayvon Thibodeau. Plus, we'll head to Rocky Top, Kenny Pickett and the Pitt Panthers going on the road to take on the Volunteers of Tennessee. And we'll set the table for that huge showdown of the Cyhawks series, Iowa State and Iowa, all coming up when you join me and Sam Acho at the half. Locked in, KC. Kevin and Acho in the studio once we go to the half in just about three minutes. So here's Ehlers and the Pirates. This is Harris. A pretty conservative start to this two minute drive. You have over two and a half minutes left two timeouts typically you will start a two minute drive by seeing what you get on play number one and then dictate the speed in which you kind of have things go from there but that wasn't very eventful in play number one here Taylor flips it Harris Brad Johnson makes the stop This is where it really works to have a veteran quarterback because you're in an important situation. You don't want to make a mistake in negative territory right here. So if it's clean, you take it. If not, a punt is not a bad thing right here if you're East Carolina. Two minutes, third and three. Ayla keeps it, runs. He's got a lot of room. Midfield, 40. 
And brought down at the 37 yard line. 34 yard run by the quarterback Brad Johnson brings him down. And a design quarterback draw. You're going to look outside, feigning the outside route, and then it was all about your veteran quarterback with really good straight line speed running right down Main Street. First time the Pirates have converted here on third down. Ehlers flushed to the sideline and that's complete. That field laying down makes the catch. With two timeouts I might have used one right there. The rule of thumb is don't start using them until you're under a minute. But with two of them I might have saved the time on that play. The rolling on the field is a complete catch. The previous play is under further review. All right, Alex Moore and crew want to take another look at the Hatfield. Let's see if he's out of bounds. The question is, is he out of bounds when he catches it? Or was he out of bounds and didn't come back and establish himself in bounds? I don't think there's anything there that could be indisputable video evidence. If he did not go out beforehand, that right knee from the other vantage point yeah. didn't seem like it was down, though. The right knee, is it down? When the ball arrives there, remember, it has to be indisputable video evidence beyond a doubt mm. to overturn what was called on the field. And another look at I've already been wrong so I'm yeah, not even going to guess on that yeah, one exactly. <laughs> I've I already was, been wrong I was going to wait for you to take a position <laughs> <laughs> Hatfield was definitely right on that line but remember what the replay booth there they aren't going by a feeling they have to see it clearly indisputably and I'm not sure any of those views we saw will be significant enough to overturn this. Yeah, I think that right knee, whether or not they say, hey, that right knee was down or out of bounds. Yeah, it was that fumble recovery that Joyner got the ball pulled loose that you and I were absolutely wrong on that one. I was following your lead because, right. you know, this is the first time we've been together. <laughs> And you led me astray. <laughs> Here's After Alex. The, the rhythm is an incomplete pass. The ball will be returned to the 37-yard line where it will be second down. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to one minute and 18 seconds. Thank you. Hey, look, we got a great group of games on the family of networks. Soon as we're done, you've got Georgia, UAB, of course, Iowa, Iowa State. First time both those teams have been ranked in the top 20. That's Brock Purdy's legacy game right there. Mm -hmm. He can win that one. Mm -hmm. Here's second and 10. That's incomplete. Aaron Sterling gets the big ball up there. Wondered if this ball was almost a lateral. Sterling does a good job of setting the edge, but that was awfully close. I don't know that anybody really recovered that in the immediate aftermath of the play, but that was interesting. Here's third and ten. Oh, turnover. And Damani Stanley takes it to the house, and South Carolina finally gets on the board. The pick six by Staley, who goes 63 yards. And somewhere, Deuce Staley 
A former Gamecock who played for the Eagles in the NFL is cheering his baby boy on. And a rather benign screen inside to the running back, but it was thrown hot by Ehlers. Bounced off the pads, and then Imani Staley takes it to the house. The first big play today that really has gone in the Gamecocks' favor. And just like that, we got a football game. 14-7 to with just a minute left in the first half. Here and comes the pressure. You never know. Harris is just simply going to take the screen inside. You can see the offensive line getting out in front. That ball was suddenly on Harris. Ehlers, I think, could have taken a little bit off that. And then the beneficiary was Staley. And he had one blocker down the field as well. So many times because you're taught as a quarterback, when you're throwing screens to running backs, especially in traffic, you got to keep it in their frame. That one was behind Harris on the left shoulder, bounced up in cost East Carolina dearly. And for South Carolina, as we all even, when you talk about points off of turnovers, for South Carolina, you get on the board, you're now only down seven, and you get the football to begin the second half. And that really changes what Shane Beamer is going to say in the locker room. He's like, guys, can't play any worse. We can't do that anymore. We can't play any worse. Exactly right. And look where we are. Go out and be us in the second half, and we'll be fine. Hey, the 52nd season of Monday Night Football kicks off 8 Eastern. ESPN, ABC, ESPN, Deportes next week. Ravens in the Vegas to take on the Raiders. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Lewis Riddick, they've got to call Lisa Salters. Uh, John Perry on the field. Monday Night Countdown kicks off our coverage. 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific on ESPN and over on ESPN2. You got Peyton and Eli Manning. That's They're teaming be up. Interesting. Oh, you got, you yeah. know that's going to be entertaining. I'm going to start just recording that if I don't have a chance to watch to go back and take a look. But, if, hey, I'm your agent. You're a free agent. I can get you a running back position with the Ravens right now. <laughs> They're right. dropping like flies. <laughs> you're right about that. <laughs> Here's Mitchell. Cuts back. And brought down. By the way, this uh, second game, second straight game for South Carolina that they've, they've gotten themselves a pick six. Jordan Birch a, a week ago yep. and a defense that can score when your offense is more than anemic. I mean, that's a big deal for South Carolina currently. 30 seconds left in the half. Ehlers under pressure. And that's JJ Nekbari. You knew at some point he's going to make his presence felt. He's right here, and watch him bend the edge. It's called running the rail. And it's the slap and the dip, and then plant the outside foot and make a beeline to the quarterback. First team SEC a year ago, and he knows how to haunt just like that. Remember how his day started. He was a Nats eyelash from being ejected because of a targeting they got overturned. Big development on the first play of the game. Fourth sack of the day for South Carolina. ECU will be looking at third and long. And I think Shane Beamer uses a timeout to probably Thank you. probably force ECU to punt the football. Beamer ball alive and well. Yep. Block punt. You get after him after this. So one timeout remaining, third and 12. You would expect a run right here or a very benign pass, although the last benign pass was a pick six off the shoulder pad on a screened running back. So... Maybe Ehlers keeps it. Another timeout by South Carolina and try to block the punt. Mitchell. 
Bounces out of the hole to the outside and brought down. And there's the last time out by South Carolina. Good game management. And what's interesting for Shane Beamer, obviously he's been around it his whole life. His, his dad is known for kind of amplifying the special teams, but Lincoln Riley used him for that as an assistant head coach at Oklahoma. Kind of almost an instinctive sense, like a gift in a, in a way to understand those situations, clock management, fourth down situations. And so that's in him somewhere. I don't know if that's DNA from dad, but certainly you would think that will become a calling card for Shane Beamer at South Carolina. Well, we asked Coach Beamer, what exactly is, what do you define Beamer ball? And he said, whether it's offense, whether it's defense, whether it's special teams, attack and being able to score. No matter which unit is on the field, whether it's my offense, whether it's the defense, or especially my special teams. So let's see what their special teams can do here. Fourth and nine, you know they're coming after it. Van. They let it roll, and it's down at the 29-yard line. And if you're Van right there, you have to hustle up and fair catch that football. Because the thing that you could do potentially, if you fair catch that and not let it bounce around is South Carolina comes close to this. But don't let it bounce around. Five seconds are off the clock. You yeah. can run one more play, get out of bounds, and then you're in a better position to throw a Hail Mary into the end zone. I think that's exactly what it, Shane it, Beamer it, is exactly. saying. Don't face. let it bounce. Right. Couldn't agree more, Coach Beamer. So that's the half, 14 to seven. ECU with the lead. Now let's send you to the studio, my main man, Kevin Connors. Welcome to ESPN College Football. It is presented by Sling TV. Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. And it's 14 to 7 ECU over South Carolina. Ryan Custer alongside Kelly Stauffer. And I'll tell you what, offensively, this one hadn't been pretty. <laughs> oh, at my all. goodness. Aside from the first play of the game, this is all about the defense and especially turnovers. Yeah, nothing has worked really, to be honest with you. Not by design. The protection's been poor. Got off to a great start on the reverse, and Sneed throws a strike down the sideline that was the first play of the game and it went south from that point on the defense started to take over and South Carolina got a gift this was a two-minute situation and Staley ends up getting that carol on a forced screen pass to a running back in short time situation that allowed the door to stay open for South Carolina and so that's what Shane Beamer says he says okay Everything on the screen right now looks as ugly as it can possibly look. But dudes, we're down 14 to 7, so we can get this done. Yeah, three turnovers by South Carolina, a couple of turnovers for the Pirates, and Holton Ehlers and Zeb Nolan have certainly had a first half that you can want to forget about. I mean, Ooh. Nolan, you know, 8 of 13 for 133, but look at that. Look at the. the yards he's been sacked for and then all nailers those numbers aren't pretty <laughs> we begin the second half joiner shakes loose brings it out to the 30 and miscues have been what it's all the story for south carolina three of them in the first half Ehlers just, or excuse me, Nolan just did not see it clearly. And then when his receivers caught the football, it was taken away. Van stepping into the end zone for an apparent touchdown. And then a first down by Joyner that would have extended a drive and just couldn't get out of their own way, South Carolina, in that first half. Here's the Condre White. Gets to the edge. Good open field tackle by DJ Ford. So because this is what happened in South Carolina's locker room, I guarantee you, someone got in the face of the offensive line and said, listen, this is our advantage to run the football right now. So you need to get it going. We have a stable of running backs that can get it done. Offensive line, 
win this game in the second half. Their strength has been the running backs for South Carolina. This is Lloyd. Lloyd shakes one defender, gets a first down. And knocked out of bounds. Let's go down to the field. Here's Lauren Sisler. Hey, guys. I, to I talked to Coach Beamer coming out of the locker room, and he said the defense played well. He was pleased with their performance. They got things done. But offensively, he says we've got to find a way to run the football. We've got to run the football, get the ball in the running back's hands. And most disappointingly, he said everything we talked about before this football game happened that we didn't want to happen, not turning the ball over, playing with poise. He feels we settled down, weathered the storm, and they feel they're in control of this game. They just need a big drive here. Let's see if they can get it. Lloyd again up the middle. And because that playing with poise point is enormous, there were some boneheaded unsportsmen like well after the play that extended a couple of drives for, for ECU as well. So absolutely right to Lauren is keep your composure in the midst of adversity. This is the 20th meeting between these two programs. South Carolina has won four straight against ECU. Nolan, play fake and incomplete. Looking at Jaheim Bell. And the play action pass is essentially irrelevant because you're play actioning off a run game that's not working. So ECU's not respecting the play action pass game out of South Carolina at all. And that was a really good example of it. Play action pass, you threw in to a zone coverage with a crossing route, and that's not a good look. So on that graphic, last time ECU beating the Gamecocks, 1999. You don't get it get done in third and long. White in the backfield. And no one had to get rid of it because Jeremy Lewis was coming on his backside. Yeah, off the edge at the top. And it's that pressure that ECU is known for. You just don't know where it's coming from. It was a really good pass call. It was anticipatory play calling. You had two crossing routes. It's called a mesh route. But the quarterback still didn't have anywhere to go with the football. Tyler Sneed standing at his own 15. Calls for the fair catch at his own 25. Just starting the second half. Holton Aylers and the Pirates will go to work when we come back. something's wrong with your car, it's tough to know which parts to blame. So take your car to someone who's trained to fix and replace virtually all of them. You may just know us for transmissions, but at Amco, we repair everything from brakes and shocks to the toughest engine problem. So when you put it all together, nobody beats Amco. Come to Ebert's Amco on Wade Hampton Boulevard in Taylor's. We're open and here to help. With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Get an incredible summer offer on a new Honda, only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Ready, set, go. This is the American Conference on ESPN. Home opener for ECU as we mark the 20 year anniversary of 9-11 and they remembered some of those heroes really gave up their lives trying to save others from those terrorist attacks that took over 3,000 lives there in New York City. The towers went down and the school did a tremendous ceremony at the half remembering those brave people who lost their lives and obviously the heroes too tried to save some of those people who perished in the towers. That pass was incomplete. It's second down now for ECU. 
Yeah, so, a lot of moving parts on that play and Ryan Jones the tight end comes across the formation and goes to the flat. Just trying to outflank the defense but once again couldn't finish the play. Offensive football is difficult if you don't have splash plays because most teams can't be efficient enough to drive it in order to get points. So far Ehlers 4 of 11 for just 27 yards through the air. And good defensive play as Cam Smith comes up with another one. Cam Smith is out of the doghouse a personal foul unsportsmanlike in that first half. He got benched the rest of that half but he's a cover corner and one thing that cover corners know how to do is hold <laughs> when nobody's watching. <laughs> and that's exactly what that looks like but not having explosive plays splash plays big plays offensively most offenses can't be efficient enough to drive the football. The Pirates are just one of eight on third down. Ehlers over the middle but incomplete and drop. Audio Matosho dropped it. In really good defense, just understanding the down and distance, understanding where receivers are breaking routes, press man on the outside, and then you're zoned up inside and squeezing those routes that the quarterback is trying to use just to get enough to extend the drive. Another punt coming by John Young. Josh Van standing at his own 30. Fourteen to seven, our score here in the third. Forty-three yard punt. When something's wrong with your car, it's tough to know which parts to blame. So take your car to someone who's trained to fix and replace virtually all of them. You may just know us for transmissions, but at Amco, we repair everything from brakes and shocks to the toughest engine problem. So when you put it all together, nobody beats Amco. Come to Ebert's Amco on Wade Hampton Boulevard in Taylor's. We're open and here to help. With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Get an incredible summer offer on a new Honda, only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Ready, set, go. Well, this season, Allstate will celebrate every field goal. An extra point made by participating universities by donating to the university's general scholarship fund. Certainly want to thank you, Allstate, for that. And what a lineup we've got for you this weekend and Monday this afternoon on ESPN, the U.S. Open Women's Final. That's at 4 Eastern. And Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One, ABC tonight, Washington and Michigan at 8 Eastern. Tomorrow afternoon on ESPN is the U.S. Open Men's Final. Of course, the Joker looking for the calendar Grand Slam. That's at 4 Eastern. Monday night, football week one matchup. Ravens in Vegas, Raiders, that's the ESPN ABC, and of course Peyton and Eli on ESPN2. Juju McDowell cuts back. And nearly gets to midfield. Listen, this is the best start for SC on a drive here, starting from their own 32. And really going to what they know, double tight ends to the right side, running a simple outside zone to McDowell, who's kind of the jitterbug that can get outside quickly. And you also see the play caller Marcus Satterfield trying to find that guy that can get hot in the backfield. Maybe McDowell is that guy in the second half. Longest run of the day for South Carolina. They'll give it to McDowell again. And he's across midfield and into Pirate territory. And listen, this is crucial here for South Carolina because the only other time They've been in pirate territory. Remember, they threw a pick. Yeah. 
they haven't been over there very much. There isn't any question. And the scouting report on Juju McDowell was that he's the game breaker for the future. Well, the future may be now, right? Yeah, absolutely. They haven't gotten anything going offensively. Maybe he's it. And it's McDowell again, but I think his knee touched the ground as he spun. So a lack of getting him hatted up up front, a second and four turns into a third and pass down most likely once again. You wonder, because as you talked about it, South Carolina penetrated the 50 for only the second time. Maybe this is roll the dice territory on fourth down for Shane Beamer. Gamecocks 0 of 7 on third down here lately. Now it's going to be third and ten. Full start, looks like. I think Wanham, the big right tackle, jumped a little bit early. Those right, right and left tackle. Turnatine and, and Wanham have had tough days. And you think about what's coming ahead. Third down breakdown, and that's not a good look. You can't live in third and long. That's why you end up two and nine on the day. But yep. the tackles have to be more productive for South Carolina for this offense to do anything. Coach Beamer told us we got to be great on third down. He has not seen it here today. Nolan throws. It's incomplete. What, is it a mix up there with between quarterback receiver? It was, was that just a bad throw? It looked like a bad throw. Leggett had run a curl route outside, short of the line to gain, by the way. So that wasn't even going to be a conversion. Sometimes as a quarterback, you, you expect a slight adjustment. And then Zed Nolan just is frustrated, just doesn't understand. And that's his quarterback, or his tight end, actually. The, the frustration is building offensively for South Carolina. Got a touchback. 52-yard punt. Pirates with the rock when we come back here in the third quarter. When something's wrong with your car, it's tough to know which parts to blame. So take your car to someone who's trained to fix and replace virtually all of them. You may just know us for transmissions, but at Amco, we repair everything from brakes and shocks to the toughest engine problem. So when you put it all together, nobody beats Amco. Come to Ebert's Amco on Wade Hampton Boulevard in Taylor's. We're open and here to help. With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Get an incredible summer offer on a new Honda, only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Ready, set, go. Hey, here's a few of our upcoming AAC football games on ESPN Plus this afternoon, 3.30. You got 7th ranked Cincinnati hosting Murray State. 7 p.m., you got SMU taking on the Mean Green of North Texas. September 25th, 6 p.m. Eastern, Charleston Southern takes on ECU right here at Dowdy Ficklin. Listen, you're an AAC fan, you got to have it. Sign up today, plus.espn.com slash AAC. Ehlers rolling, flushed, and throws it away. Jonathan Strawn applying the pressure. And I like ECU getting Ehlers outside. Your basic flood play, you have... Three routes on three different levels. You get your quarterback, a lefty, going left outside the pocket. But very, very well defended by South Carolina defensively. They give it to Harris. He picks up a couple. Jalen Foster was the first to meet him. Because it just seems like both of these offenses have been behind the chains from the get-go. You know, 
Ehlers. He started this game four of seven through the air. So far, he has missed six of his last seven attempts. He's looking at third and seven here. And he's got one and incomplete. And out of the hand, just I have to. And there's a flag. Is that Cam again? That was Cam. Ooh, I wouldn't be Cam. surprised if this is going to come with a targeting. It was slightly late as well, so we'll listen in of whether it's a personal foul with targeting. And Cam Smith immediately pointed to his shoulder, but it's where the shoulder hit. That's a defenseless player. Personal foul, targeting, defense number nine. The previous play is under further review. So because if Cam Smith does not understand this, it isn't just the shoulder. It's the defenseless player. So if those forcible contact above the shoulders in the head and neck, you can give him a flying karate chop. And it's the same thing if it's a defenseless player. And I think that's going to be targeting. And I think Cam Smith, the best cover corner that South Carolina has, might be done for today. And, oh, by the way, the first half against yes. Georgia next week. Yeah, I was going to say, if that is the case, yeah, he would miss the first half of the next game, which would be against Georgia. But you need, as we pointed out earlier, indisputed, indisputed uh, video evidence yep. to overturn this one. And, you know, you, you see Cam talking about, hey, I led with the shoulder, I led with the shoulder, so... And, and Cam, that doesn't matter. If it's, if there's an indicator, which is kind of the launch of the shoulder, but it's, if there's forcible contact, and if so, where was it? If it's above the shoulders in the head and neck area, regardless of what it's with on a defenseless player, it's targeting. I think that's targeting, and I think Cam Smith is gonna be gone. But then again, you led me astray multiple times I'm today saying, already. Yeah, I'm just saying, they may call a personal foul, and. I think that's probably what they've done most After of the day. Game, there is no foul for targeting. Number nine of the defense can remain in the game. There you go. And there you go. That's at least the second one that I've disagreed there with. There you go. I think there's forcible contact. I think that was the question. Yeah. Whether that contact could be deemed forcible, but it was above the shoulders in the head and neck area. It doesn't matter what it's with on a defenseless player. So the only thing that the replay booth could have determined is it wasn't classified as forcible contact, but I would beg to differ. So fourth and seven here for the Pirates. John Van will be standing back at his own 30. Let's see if they set up the return this time. He calls for the fair catch at his own 26. Well, we talked about Jane Beamer. Listen, this is a guy getting his first head coaching job. Never been a coordinator at all, but his first stop was in Tennessee. He was graduate assistant under Philip Fulmer. Then became a running cornerbacks and running backs coach under Sylvester Croom, Mississippi State, and special teams coordinator here at Steve Spurrier, South Carolina. He said that was when he wanted to be a head coach here. Then he went, joined his father, also, special teams coordinator with Kirby Smart at Georgia, and and just recently he was at Oklahoma. There's Josh Van with the big pickup, but there's the flag on the play. That's a 30-yard pickup, and it looks like that's coming back. Holding, offense number three, 10 yard penalty. After enforcement, it will still be first down. And that's the senior, Jalen Brooks. Yeah. Jalen Brooks, the wide receiver, he's also running a route and just tries to block at the very end. All of that yardage is already gained. 
And Brooks was working hard. You can't fault him for that, but you have to understand when you give up. And you certainly can't, can't get a halt, halt for a hold 20-some yards down the field. Another big play for South Carolina comes back. From the pistol, Kevin Harris. Breaks a tackle. Leans forward, pickup of about four. And because that's what you want to see more of. It's a very deep, diverse running back room. They have to create their own shots more often. This offensive line is not really hatting the defensive line up very well, just getting a hat on a hat and trying to move people. So you have to create your own sometimes as a running back, and Harris did a little bit right there. Harris will remain in. Carry, first down, across midfield. Brought down at the 45 of ECU. Going out the back door of a zone run. It was zone run to the right. But Harris is experienced enough to see the backside right there. And he pops it through the back door. ECU is over pursuing just a little bit. And that's what you do with a zone run. Is there's a front side and a back side. The back side, if the door's not covered, go ahead and let your feet get you there. Ran for over a... 1,100 yards last season. It's Kevin Harris. They continue to give him the rock. He missed the season opener with an illness, but he's back. Picks up another five. The run game feels like it has a little bit of rhythm on this drive. And Harris is a guy that can do that. They Marcus Satterfield said that what we miss in Harris is a physical guy that can control the line of scrimmage with his style of play. And we've seen that on the last two running plays by South Carolina. Marshawn Lloyd has come in now to give Harris a blow. Lloyd swallowed up by a host of Pirates, Manny Hickman. The first to grab him. Second and six, you run the football once again because we talked about that rhythm. That offensive line seems to be a bit more lathered up on this drive. But a tackle for loss is where ECU lives defensively. Their entire scheme defensively is centered on tackles for loss, force the offense behind the chains, and then get after them and down in distances just like this. Third and eight. South Carolina, two of ten on third down. Quandre White, not backwards by Bruce Bivens. They call him Hammerhead because he says he will thump you. That's what it looks like. Hammerhead indeed. White thinks he's on to something about right here and then bam. An open hole is relative in college football, and just when White thought he had it, it closed quickly. Steve with the fair catch. To the studio, and Kevin Connors. Hey, because your Buckeyes down 21-7 till Jackson Smith in Jigba finds space. Yes, it's man-to-man, -man, free access, free yards. No reroute, wide open touchdown. All right, so it's a seven-point game, but Travis Dye and the Ducks answer. Yes, the same play they ran on the other earlier touchdown. Pulling the guard, no edge. Once again, edges, edges, edges. Over 220 yards on the ground for the Ducks, Brian. Mm. Uh oh! Tell Acho to take that excitement out of his yeah. voice, though. You know he didn't have to do that. He sounded too excited when he gave that breakdown. Yeah. I'm in the booth with two Custer brothers. They were born and raised in Columbus, and the vibe isn't real good right now. Here's Keaton Mitchell. Cuts back. Two hundred plus on the ground, brothers. What, what's going on here? And no Thibodeau. That's that's I, no Thibodeau. I, I don't understand that. I just don't understand. I don't understand. Ooh-wee. I feel for you guys. Yeah, if you need man. a hug somewhere in the next few minutes, you just let me know, all right? <laughs> Seven-point lead here for the Pirates. Under five minutes left in the quarter. Keith Mitchell. 
Straight ahead. They milked that clock. And this one's tough for the Pirates because, you know, they, they talk about Ehlers and getting into a rhythm, and he really hasn't had it, so they're trying to find something too offensively. Yeah, and it's going to have to come by design because schematically they're just not getting there. They're being overpowered up front, not much of a running game, and you're right. The three-point shooter that's their quarterback is just not feeling it right now. One of ten on third down. Snee, there you go. Right at the stick. And they talked about getting the football to Tyler Sneed. And he delivers. And this is a really easy way to do it. The quarterback's going to roll to where Sneed is lined up. And then it's somewhat of a natural pick. The outside receiver in Johnson comes inside. And at the very least, he has to force Sneed's defender over the top to create a little bit of room. And that time it was successful. 21st straight game that he's had a catch. Mitchell takes this one. Let's go down to the field in Lawrence Sisler. Hey, guys, talking about Tyler Sneed, he came to East Carolina as a walk-on, and now he's one of the biggest weapons on this team. And, guys, don't let that size fool you. Offensive coordinator Donnie Kirkpatrick watched his high school tape. He wasn't overly impressed, wasn't sold on his size, but that's what makes him even better. He plays with a chip on his shoulder, practices, plays harder than anybody. Kirkpatrick said, honestly, he's confident, almost cocky, but in a good way. Yeah, you're right about that. Comes from a family of athletes. Mother, father, both athletes. His aunt, in fact, played hoop right here at ECU, 94 to 96. Yeah, we know what the scatter report says, pound for pound on Mr. Sneed, right? Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> right, that's what they say. Pound that's an, for pound. That's an in-house scatter report, <laughs> hey, by the and, way. And guys, I would be remiss if I didn't mention his sister, the standout gymnast at Georgia, Sydney Steve. You know, I'm a former gymnast, so I got to give a shout out and give some love to the other gymnasts out there. <laughs> <laughs> they were looking for Sneed there. That one is broken up. David Spaulding knocked it away. And that was the same play that ECU converted with Sneed on the third down before. The quarterback's going to roll into it. A natural pick from the other receiver coming from outside in. And that time it was a tremendous play by Spaulding just laying out and getting a hand on the ball late. Busiest guy. I think for East Carolina is that man right there, John Young, six punts. I'm going to have to get in that cryo machine when this game's <laughs> over. His leg has had a workout. Hey, today at 4.30 Eastern on ABC, college football presented by Arby's featuring 10th-ranked Iowa, 9th-ranked Iowa State, and a Matt Campbell, Ferris. Then we'll take it to the big house. Ann Arbor, Saturday night football matchup presented by Capital One. Jim Harbaugh and those Wolverines host Washington. You can always watch the game. ESPN app, one app, one test. Brock Purdy's got to get off today, I'm telling you. He's the guy that can do it as well. You talk about a legacy game. I always won five in a row in this rivalry. Six out of the last seven. Brock Purdy can change that today. And you're doing it there at Jack Trice, too, in Ames. And I think, love that setting, yeah. right? Hey, listen, they, when they last played two years ago, I was there to call that game, and Iowa State had it until the very end. And going up top, it's complete. Josh Van making the catch. Big play by the Gamecocks. Just bump and run outside, and it's one of the first times we've seen the Gamecocks just drop back and throw a vertical. Van gets over the top by, of McMillan and does a good job of using his hands, creating a little bit of separation, not getting called for pushing off, and well thrown by Zeb Nolan. 45-yard pass play. Pirates show pressure. McDowell. Jeremy Lewis makes the stop. And because you talked about it, the pressure was coming from the field, the left, the right side of the offense, and whether it was Fortune or Nolan got to a play where they ran opposite that. That's exactly what you would want to do. If you see that early enough, you would certainly want to check that. But it might have been just an anticipation of 
field pressure and running into the boundary to begin with. McDowell remains in the backfield. This is from the pistol now. Nolan looking to the outside, looking for Van. Got it! Corner of the end zone. Touchdown, South Carolina. Twenty-three yards. Zeb Nolan to Josh Van, and the game cocks are an extra point away from tying up this football game. No doubt that this apparent touchdown reception is going to be looked at further by the replay booth. Sometimes they do it just kind of intrinsically without stopping the game, but tremendously well thrown by Zeb Nolan. You can see right into Nolan's eyes what he's looking at, and then he drops it in the shirt pocket, and absolutely. Does Van have possession initially before he ends up stepping out of bounds? That's what the replay booth is going to take a look at. If he catches it clean initially, there's no doubt about it, but once he started to bobble it, that left foot had come off the ground. That's what the replay booth is going to be looking at. But Van picked on McMillan on the other side on the big play, and then he comes back and works on Malik Fleming on the fade route, and that's where the fade route gets its name. You fed it, fade that receiver into that pylon. So are they going to look at this and say, okay, when he made the catch, that right foot was down. See, right here. Is that going to be the determining factor in this call? Because the call on the field now is touchdown. you got to have video evidence to overturn that. And that's kind of been the theme of the replay booth, right? Yeah. that right foot right foot down catch does he ever have possession Good. it's got to be clear possession when a body part is down mm -hmm. before you go out of bounds <laughs> listen whatever you say i'm going the opposite <laughs> direction I'm, what are you saying i'm going to say the call stands touchdown dang it that's where i wanted to go with this because <laughs> you, you we've been looking at them like oh the bobble they'll probably overturn this but you know they've been consistent on our spotter brother darren is not agreeing with you <laughs> he's calling it incomplete <laughs> here's another look clear possession a body part down does that constitute clear possession if he bobbles it right, right away? Because I'm going with Darren. Okay. I think that's an incomplete pass. Well, let's find out. The ball moves. The right foot is up. The left foot doesn't come down in bounds. I'm say Alex is going to say touchdown. After review, the pass is incomplete. Oh! Okay, so... As you and I become friends, yeah. the one thing I've already learned, replays, I'm going with your brother. <laughs> All right? It's unbelievable. <laughs> so I was about to just say, South Carolina, three plays, 72 yards, and a buck 25. But instead, it's third down and six. And you can see Coach Beamer saying, please explain that to me. I saw that right foot down when he made that catch. Not clear possession. He didn't catch it clean. The ball moved. The right foot's up. Stepped out of bounds. Darren and I saw it all along. That's a... I think that's I think that's the right call. In the meantime, it's red zone third and six. This is money ball right here. Yep. Zeb Nolan needs to make a good decision. And don't forget about those big tight ends that are awesome targets down here in the red zone. Third and six. Two of 11. The Gamecocks are on third down. Pressure coming. He's throwing to the end zone again. And there's a flag. And he went back at Jaquan McMillan. Van's just picking on everybody today. And it's been the fade route. Pass interference. Defense from 21. It's the 
15 yard penalty enforced from the previous block with an automatic first down. And this one was on McMillan, the fade route once again. The thing is, is McMillan has it played really well. Now what you have to do is let the eyes tell you when the ball's coming and then break the pocket up. When the hands go up, your hands go up. McMillan's in great position. Don't panic. You don't have to lay out right there. Turn and break the pocket. The ball has to come to the hands or it's not going to be complete. So many young corners panic at the end after they've already done the heavy lifting. Less than a minute in the third quarter. First time the Gamecocks have been in the red zone. And we got a false start. That's on Kevin Harris who just checked into the game. And he tried to jump the gun because he could tell that his quarterback was clapping his hands trying to get the ball off. Shane Beamer has to work his guys through the first adversity of the year has come in this game. His guys in the first half lost their poise multiple times. Done a better job of maintaining their composure here in half number two. Eight penalty for South Carolina. First and goal. Nolan throws over the middle. Too high. Again, he was looking at Van. Advantage Jaquan McMillan. Now this certainly was a high throw, but there's a lot of traffic underneath that. The play action is to invite that second level of defenders up a little bit. Miles Berry did a nice job from his linebacker position of not being enticed into the line of scrimmage. Get your hands up, and that window closes quickly. And as a quarterback, you kind of inherently want to throw that a little bit higher than you need to. That's Van in motion. Nolan looking over the middle for Van. Got him! That's Joyner in the back of the end zone. The carry on Joyner with the catch. The degree of difficulty on this throw, the back of the end zone when there's a defender breaking underneath Joyner. And so you have to get it high enough, but yet it has to remain firm enough to get there for Joyner before he goes out of the back of the end zone. And Joyner goes up and just claims this ball out of the air. Look at the loft on that. To get over that defender, you saw the very tips of the fingertips of the defender up there. That's what Nolan's looking at. So you throw it up the elevator shaft a little bit, hoping that Joyner can go get it, and he did just that. First touchdown of the season for him. The Gamecocks go five plays, 72 yards, and they do it in a minute 38. This is a big time throw. The degree of difficulty doesn't get much higher than that right there. Over top of that defender that's reaching up there, Miles Berry just can't quite get there. He would, Berry's a linebacker and he was getting depth progressively the longer that play played out. And then Nolan, I found that to be the hardest pass to make where you have to get it over a defender but yet firm enough to get there on time. And Nolan did all of it. And the closer on the ball, the carry on Barry just, or excuse me, Joyner just goes up and snatches it. Zip Nolan now thrown for 215 yards. Touchdown and he has one interception. And we are tied up. And overcoming that replay that overturned the touchdown which Darren and I were exactly right on and you were not but in the end Zeb Nolan leads them into the end zone anyway all tied up here in Carolina let's go to the studio Brian Jack Cohn to Michael Mayer gets the Irish on the board yes this is a classic pick play George Sackett's the other tight end picks the two DBs all of a sudden Michael Mayer in the end zone Mayer and Cohn were great a week ago the Irish in front seven nothing Brian Acho must be a defensive guy oh, because absolutely. they're not picks. When they work offensively, they're rubs. <laughs> right? Picks like a are illegal. <laughs> rubs happen all the time in football. <laughs> Here's Ayler to the outside and to Steve within the slot. 
Because remember when we talked about the offense needing some explosive plays? South Carolina just found their way to do that. The question is, where is East Carolina going to get their version of it? It's been few and far between today offensively. 20 seconds left in the quarter. Harris breaks the tackle. Spins off another one. And brought down close to midfield. 16-yard pickup. As we head to the fourth quarter, all tied up at 14. We got a good one here in Greenville. 14 to 14, our score, ECU in South Carolina. When something's wrong with your car, it's tough to know which parts to blame. So take your car to someone who's trained to fix and replace virtually all of them. You may just know us for transmissions, but at Amco, we repair everything from brakes and shocks to the toughest engine problem. So when you put it all together, nobody beats Amco. Come to Ebert's Amco on Wade Hampton Boulevard in Taylor's. We're open and here to help. With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Get an incredible summer offer on a new Honda, only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Ready, set, go. We're all tied up at 14 as we begin the fourth quarter. Taco Bell welcomes you to the Live Ma Student Section of the Year Contest. Use the hashtag Student Section Sauce. Get the committee's attention. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. And here at Dowdy Ficklin, they got the boneyard. Back of the end zone. This is Roger Harris. Driven backwards. The play before that 16-yard run was the longest run by ECU today. Mike Elko, the defensive coordinator at Texas A&M, told me last week, 80% of the scoring drives in college football have at least one explosive play somewhere in it. So the defense knows that. They're trying to eliminate that type of play. The offense has a hard time driving it to get points if they don't have at least one of those somewhere along the way. This is Harris. He, he explodes forward and has a first down. So basically what I just said, this drive should end up in the end zone like eight out of ten times, right? Something, something in that neighborhood, if I can trust defensive coordinator Elko's map, but explosive plays are necessary to be good offensively. You see you going with power to two tight end set. Continue to ride the back of Harris. Jabari Ellis makes the stop for South Carolina. It's interesting that both of these offenses seem to get, get more traction when they started to line up more than one tight end. Soften the edge a little bit. Sometimes there have been three tight ends in there, and both of these squads have a pretty good-looking tight end room. Keaton Mitchell in the backfield. Tyler Sneed in the slot for ECU. Taylor's looking his way. And here's Sneed. Brought down at the 22-yard line. Sneed does a really good job of adjusting this. He's on an out route, but he sees a defender outside of him. And so he just sets down right there, coming right into your living room. There's a defender outside. Don't run to get covered. Run to get open. And so Sneed sees that, set down in green grass, and his quarterback finds it. Pickup. Five yards for him. 
all of a sudden we have offensive juggernauts. Where did when did this happen? Yeah, no. <laughs> no offense in the first half. Second half they're putting it together. Good looking drives. Second time for the Pirates that they've been in the red zone. Mitchell. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. Jalen Foster was the first one to trip him up. I think I might have stopped that play and called the timeout. Ehlers did not look like he was comfortable with where Mitchell was to begin with. And then he has motion coming from left to right. And there was a boatload of leakage up front. That did not look good from the beginning. Third and six. Ehlers rolls, steps, holds it. Under pressure, sack. Brad Johnson. Fifth sack for the Gamecocks. Ehlers was looking for Snead in that left slot. Faking outside, going inside. Great man-to-man -man coverage. You see the help over the top by Jalen Foster from the safety position. And then it's absorption by the pressure up front from South Carolina. Crucial loss of eight. Beamer stuff going on out there yeah, right now. How about with this, this lineup? Funky punt formation. <laughs> I think South Carolina yeah, got a timeout. Yeah, they got a timeout before that, and they hadn't called a timeout. They might have gotten a little something here. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> they got the turnover. That was a bad snap. Yes, but remember, it was. you're not snapping to a six-four quarterback anymore. You're snapping to a five-seven wide receiver in Snead. Here's the coach calling timeout. We're tied up at 14 here in the fourth quarter. When something's wrong with your car, it's tough to know which parts to blame. So take your car to someone who's trained to fix and replace virtually all of them. You may just know us for transmissions. But at Amco, we repair everything from brakes and shocks to the toughest engine problem. So when you put it all together, nobody beats Amco. Come to Ebert's Amco on Wade Hampton Boulevard in Taylor's. We're open and here to help. With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Get an incredible summer offer on a new hunt, only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Ready, set, go. Welcome back. ESPN College Football. It is presented by Sling TV. Tied up at 14, fourth quarter. Under 11 minutes left in the game. Fourth and 14 for the Pirates. From the South Carolina 27. Ayler under pressure, throws to the outside. They're going to discuss it. It was C.J. Johnson. Here's a flag as well. And that actually might be offsides before the ball was snapped on South Carolina. Offside, defense number seven. Penalty is the flag. First down. Wow. The back shoulder throw, well executed. C.J. Johnson with the catch. The high school teammate, C.J. Johnson and Ehlers. That high school chemistry paid off right there. That was a back shoulder throw, great placement. The offsides, you take the result of the play if you convert. If not, obviously, you take the penalty and maybe try to go for it again on fourth and becomes about fourth and nine. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's see the measurement. First down. 
And ball placement, line to gain is also reviewable, so the replay booth is at work as we speak, trying to make sure that that was spotted correctly. And Shane Beamer maybe say, hold on a second. Someone in the house take a further look at this thing. 11th play of this drive coming. How big was that? Fourth yeah. and 14? Absolutely. Find your high school teammate and sling a back shoulder out there. Harris fumbled by Ehlers. Looked like he was going to give it to Harris and then pull it back. And yeah, the intricate ball handling didn't allow Ehlers to actually make that fake and did the right thing. Just secure it and then get what you can get. What did you think of the not kicking the field goal on fourth and 14 That's when you were call, supposedly within Daffer's range. Yep. Not a whole lot of confidence in that young man, apparently. Sneed in the slot. Daffer's really a freshman. Ayler looking. He throws it away. And the line judge is pointing to an eligible receiver because Ayler's was once again still in the pocket. Air mailed it. You know, harken back to that Intentional grounding that was called on Zeb Nolan in the first half under similar circumstances. And I didn't agree with it because there was a vertical route, and as a quarterback, you can airmail it out your exit hatch in a sense. And the officials aren't supposed to interpret the intent of the quarterback if there's an eligible receiver somewhere in the vicinity. Pirates 2 of 13 here on third down. Ailey looking over the middle. Sneed caught. Sneed dies for the end zone. Touchdown! I'm not so sure the official is in calling Sneed down initially. Off the catch? I think off the catch. Yeah, the catch was in. secure. Sneed comes inside at 5'7 and just finds open space. And then it's yards after catch. Down, the left yep. knee is down. Absolutely. That's a great catch by the official on the field. No doubt about it. And so East Carolina has work to do. And you can see coach was asking, is it a first down? So he's looking at fourth down now. Well, in the meantime, the play clock is running. The shot clock is running. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to call a timeout. And that's what coach does. Tied score at 14. 850 left in this one. We got a good one here in Greenville, North Carolina. something's wrong with your car it's tough to know which parts to blame so take your car to someone who's trained to fix and replace virtually all of them you may just know us for transmissions but at amco we repair everything from brakes and shocks to the toughest engine problem so when you put it all together nobody beats amco come to ebert's amco on wade hampton boulevard in taylor's we're open and here to help With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Get an incredible summer offer on a new Honda, only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Ready, set, go. ESPN College Football is presented by Sling TV. Replace cable with affordable live TV with Sling. And in part by PlayStation, play has no limits. Tied up at 14. 8.50 left in this game. Fourth down for the Pirates. Owen Daffer.
the freshman out of Wilmington. This is from 26 yards out. And the lead. Good kick. Good as well. That drive went 14 plays, 67 yards, seven minutes went off the clock. And was an answer to what South Carolina just did. So let's take a look at our Expedia Drive recap. For South Carolina. South Carolina found a way to try to get explosive plays. It was Vaughn picking on corners. One left, one right. That touchdown was taken away. The pass interference on McMillan. And then Joyner goes up and snags it out of the air. That was impressive. And then the answer by East Carolina was equally impressive. And the youngster, Owen Daffer, Drills it right down Main Street to go ahead by three. I thought it was interesting that Mike Houston used a timeout before we went to break. There was the replay of the Snead touchdown, which we could see right away that wasn't going to be a touchdown because the knee was down. And the head coach in a tight game chose to use a timeout, I think to give his young kicker a little more time to gather himself and go out there and he hit one straight as a string. Juju McDowell across the 20. Juju McDowell across the 30. Juju McDowell down the sideline and knocked out of bounds at the 35. <laughs> Coaching staff told us that Juju McDowell was a future game breaker, and we've talked about it in the run game a couple of touches, and then the special teams. Beamer ball once again. They talk about it being the hidden yards. Where can you gain field position? Where can you make a big play, potentially score on a special teams play? And Frank Beamer built a reputation on doing it all the time. And the youngster, Shane Beamer, is coming up with some big ones at opportune times as well. 62-yard return. First and 10 from the Pirate, 33. This is Marshawn Lloyd. And to the studio and Kevin Connors. Hey, Brian, back and forth they go in Columbus. 28-14 game, Travion Henderson two-yard touchdown run. C.J. Stroud's been great. Problem is, Acho, the Bucks can't stop the Ducks. Yes, the 14-yard line, left-hand side of the play, another touchdown. I had good news for you, Brian. They scored, but then Oregon scored again. 35-21, Ducks in front. I'll say it again, Acho. Take that excitement out your voice. Take it out. I, listen, they just gave up the ball to Lloyd. Pirates tried to reach in and thought they had taken it away. I think they may have taken it away. The tight end, Nick Muse, was the one that was on the bottom of that pile and seemed to have come up with it. Marshawn Lloyd had an ACL to start camp a year ago, and... The ball seems to have been punched out right there, absolutely. And Nick Muse comes up with it. Tegan will punched it away. Almost disastrous for the Gamecocks. Here comes the pressure. Nolan to the outside, too high. That was looking, looking at Jalen Brooks. Juju McDowell on pass protection. It's the youngsters right up the middle, right there. Meets the blitzer from the secondary and gives his quarterback just enough time to get that ball out. Pass protection by young running backs is the last thing to come. And McDowell got enough of the blitzer right there. Third and 10 for South Carolina. They're 2 of 11 on third down. Juju McDowell offset right. He gets the rock. Brought down at the 21, Miles Berry. Making the stop. Now, 
Parker White will come into the game. Look to tie this up. This will be from 39 yards out. His career long is 50. He's a senior. And knocks it right through. And we're tied with 6.46 to play. Yeah, Kruger, the punter, does a great job of getting a fairly bad snap, and then Parker drives it right down the middle. When something's wrong with your car, it's tough to know which parts to blame. So take your car to someone who's trained to fix and replace virtually all of them. You may just know us for transmissions. But at Amco, we repair everything from brakes and shocks to the toughest engine problem. So when you put it all together, nobody beats Amco. Come to Ebert's Amco on Wade Hampton Boulevard in Taylor's. We're open and here to help. With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Get an incredible summer offer on a new Honda, only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Ready, set, go. Hey, today for Eastern on ESPN, you got the U.S. Open Women's Championship. And really, it's an all-team final. First between unseated players in the open air, you got the Canadian phenom, Layla Fernandez. She turned 19 on Monday, takes on the 18-year-old Emma Radicanu, who was the first qualifier ever to reach a Grand Slam final. Two amazing stories. One of them's going to be a major champion. It's also live on the ESPN app. This is Tyler Sneed. Sneed brought down at about the 20-yard line. Let's go to the studio and Kevin Connors. Hey, Bryce, Georgia coming up against UAB. The big news there, JT Daniels will not start with the oblique injury. Stetson Bennett gets the start. A Dogs team that had that dynamic win over Clemson a week ago. This game will kick at 340 between the hedges coming up next year on ESPN2 and always on the ESPN app. All right, listen, you called Benson UAB. Bennett. Didn't you call UAB last yeah. week? They have a veteran group, and they, they're in your face defensively. But listen, you can roll one of us out there, quarterback of Georgia, and that defense will win those games. Here's Keaton Mitchell. Cuts back. Picks up a couple. Five-yard pickup. Back to South Carolina squad has Georgia next week. Mm. That defense is national championship-esque. It's, to me, all about the quarterback position. You have to be championship in three areas. Offensive line of scrimmage, defensive line of scrimmage, and quarterback. And I question whether Georgia is at that third position. Taylor, play fake, rolls complete. Johnson and driven back. Tell you what, Cam Smith and Gamecocks are hitting now. Cam Smith covered a lot of ground, and he's their shutdown corner, but trust me, he ran like the wind from one sideline to the other and blew up that player. It had a chance to convert. Two of 14, the Pirates on third down. They're looking at third and five. Keaton Mitchell in the backfield. Tyler Sneed in the slot. Bottom of your screen. Ayler looking for him. Got him. Sneed driven by Jalen Foster and company. South Carolina brought pressure, but it was the fire zone type. They actually got out into a zone and it was the right place to go in a man-to-man -man setting. But again, zone, that's exactly what South Carolina wanted you to do. Throw short, we can break on the ball, we tackle, and you go ahead and punt the football away. It looks like the center, Avery Jones, being tended to. 
Good that he's up. We're tied up at 17. When something's wrong with your car, it's tough to know which parts to blame. So take your car to someone who's trained to fix and replace virtually all of them. You may just know us for transmissions, but at Amco, we repair everything from brakes and shocks to the toughest engine problem. So when you put it all together, nobody beats Amco. Come to Ebert's Amco on Wade Hampton Boulevard in Taylor's. We're open and here to help. With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Get an incredible summer offer on a new Honda, only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Ready, set, go. Tied up at 17. Five minutes left in this football game. Fourth down for the Pirates. Here's Josh Van. And the fair catch. Let's go to the sideline, our Lauren Sisler. Yeah, guys, for our extra yard for teacher today, we highlight Coach Houston recalling one of his favorite teachers being his high school basketball coach and PE teacher at Franklin High School. David Morgan was always strong in his faith, had high moral character, and was such a tremendous mentor to Mike Houston. Uh, deciding not to go to med school, he took a job at a high school teaching chemistry and physics while coaching football and basketball. He says he was never looked back, and the experiences he had as a teacher were foundational to who he is today. He loved being around those students and truly understands the impact a teacher has on a student's life. Yeah, now a teacher of men here in Greenville. First and ten for the Gamecocks. That's complete to Joyner. Jairo Wilson with the stop. Pick up of just a couple. And that's well played by Wilson to come underneath that receiver coming from the outside that tries to set a natural rub for the inside receiver. And Wilson just sliced underneath and was able to tackle the receiver for not much of a game. Two tight ends for the Gamecocks. McDowell gets the rock to the outside. Drilled, knocked out of bounds, but right at that first down marker. Let's go to the studio and Kevin Connors. Hey, Brian, the number two team in America is waiting in the on-deck circles. Amir White and the Georgia Bulldogs still looking for their first offensive touchdown of the season. Stetson Bennett will start at quarterback. The game will start on the ESPN app and fo follow our game here on ESPN2. Fantastic one app, one tap. Thank you, KC. First and ten for the Gamecocks. Stetson Bennett gets to roll. He got a little run last year when they were trying to find a quarterback. He's been there for like 17 years. McDowell again. Oh, how about McDowell? Cross midfield. Stiff arm. And he's in pirate territory. And because McDowell has been that spark in the run game that the play caller Marcus Satterfield has been looking for. And it's amazing. You didn't change the offensive linemen. They weren't blocking anybody for the other three running backs. And then you get McDowell in there, and it's just a little bit of a different look for the defense, a little bit shiftier. These different angles into that defense. And right now McDowell's making it work. 15-yard pickup. Three minutes left in the game. Nolan rolling, throws, bobbled, but caught. Van with the catch. Under three minutes, six-yard pickup. So that's the secondary route off of that rub play that we saw earlier on this drive. ECU over responds to it, and so Van, who's coming from the outside in to be the rub guy, then just sets down, shows his number to Zeb Nolan, and becomes the outlet receiver. Van over 120 yards receiving. McDowell again, cuts back. 
Brought down at the 35. Manny Hickman makes the stop. It's a first down. They'll move the sticks. Coming upon two minutes left here in this game. And Bell outside is doing a really good job of setting the edge. This is the second decent run on this play, and it's because the tight end, Jaheim Bell, is doing a really nice job of just creating softness. You don't have to pancake people out there. Just a little softness on the edge and let your running back get there. Kevin Harris has checked in now for South Carolina. And they give it to Harris. He tests that right side, runs into a wall. These two programs first met in 1977. South Carolina has won four straight against the Pirates. We got an injured Pirate on the on the field now. And if you're wondering, the scatter report on Parker White, who already hit one today, 35-yard line and in. So they're right in that neighborhood as we speak. And a veteran that's been there, done that multiple times. And then Kai Kroger, who made a fantastic hold on the last made field goal, is the holder. Hey, today, 4.30 Eastern on ABC, it's college football. It's presented by Arby's, 10th-ranked Iowa, 9th-ranked Iowa State name. Then we go to the big house, Ann Arbor, Saturday Night Football. Presented by Capital One, Harbaugh, the Wolverines taking on Washington. And you can watch all the games on the ESPN app, one at one tap. Parker White, five game winners. And 69% on field goals. Juju McDowell in the game at running back. Josh Van, first career 100-yard game rush uh, receiving. And it's McDowell, right side, cuts back. He's at the 20 and inside the 20-yard line for South Carolina. And we hit a minute coming up in this game. A great job of formationing by Marcus Satterfield, the offensive coordinator. Remember the outside runs and the, the soft edge that the tight ends are creating in it. This time, you move the tight ends from one side to the other. It's called a shift. You move multiple players from one side to the other, and it's Jaheim Bell once again just softening that edge, and then McDowell gets out there on it. Juju will remain in the football game, and they're going to ride him. Don't you get the sense, because that Shane Beamer is just positioning for the game-winning field goal. Absolutely. Let the clock run down to next to nothing. I would expect Mike Houston to use those timeouts either now or use them to try to ice Parker White when he steps out there to try to win this one. Again, he's had five game winners. 50 yards is his longest. He usually knocks down about 69% of his field goals. Let's take a look at our pocket protection brought to you by Nationwide. Well, the pocket protection can come in a lot of different ways in the outside zone run with multiple tight ends in Bell and Musk creating that soft edge. And then the youngster, Juju McDowell, has been that spark in the run game this entire second half. South Carolina won their season opener, looking to go 2-0. Pirates looking for their first win. Ball security. From the pistol, it's McDowell. Trying to get to the edge and tripped up. Jairo Wilson. He stayed in bounds, so that clock will continue to run. And that's an important part, is you don't want the young running back to run out of bounds. In the end, he does a good job of getting what he can out of it and then getting to the ground. And now let it run, and Parker White for the game winner, right? Yeah. We'll bring it down to three seconds.
they'll put things in the foot of the senior. He's already made one from 39. His career long is 50. The outside zone run on this drive has been paramount, and Juju McDowell has been at the heart of it, and a couple of tight ends doing a really nice job of creating space. And Marcus Satterfield, the offensive coordinator, has been looking for this part of the run game the entire day. It showed up here late in the game. So this is from 36 yards out. Parker White, the super senior. Three seconds left on the clock. And Coach Houston's going to ice him. Third and final charge time out of the half. East Carolina. 30 seconds. I don't think you can necessarily ice Parker timeout. White. He's kicked some big ones in the SEC and is a super senior. He's been there, done that for quite some time, and has looked straight as a string thus far today. Well within his range. It's just the battery of snap, hold, kick. You have three components that have to mesh, or you never know what's going to happen. Long snapper is Matthew Berry, and we talked about Kai Kroger. Had to corral a bad snap that was slightly behind him and high the last time that Parker White was out there and was successful on a field goal. Well, Parker White hit a 36-yarder last week. Here's another one. This one's bigger. Three seconds. For the lead and possibly the win. Kick is up. And it's good. And a walk-off field goal by Parker White in South Carolina is 2-0. Special teams for Shane Beamer in his first win on the road as a South Carolina head coach. Of course, right? Special teams being big time. After all the turnovers, they still pull out a victory and have won five straight now over ECU. Yeah, brother, Purdy will come later. Right now, you just need wins and to continue the momentum. And Parker White, good snap, good hold, and right down the middle. And Shane Beamer's reaction. Kind of like that. Knew it all the time. And Coach Houston. Yeah, disappointment. What Mike Houston has to be thinking about right there is the missed opportunities off of turnovers in the first half. I think seven points off of three takeaways doesn't get it done when you are having an SEC team come into your house. You have to take advantage of that where there are opportunities to take advantage of. They didn't do that. They did not, but South Carolina weathered the storm, and they pull out a three-point victory here in Greensville, North Carolina. And Zeb Nolan, they even made a Twitter account calling Colonel Zebuli Nolan, calling him by his real name. <laughs> what a game. Good game, partner. And Kelly Stahl from Brian Custer. Now let's send you out to Kevin Connor in the studio. All right, Brian, thanks so much. A great finish.